Welcome to the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina. A beautiful Wednesday here in the Queen City on the rooftop at JJ's Red Hots. We have a loaded coaches show for you guys today. And leading things off, pun intended, 100%. I thought of that earlier yeah. today. Uh, Jake one. Hendrick, the uh, head coach of the baseball team, joining us to start, it off, start us off. How's your Wednesday going? Great. Off day today. Beautiful day, so can't complain. Yeah, in action yesterday, you guys kind of around that midway-ish point of the season where non-con has kind of slowly ended, now picking up that ace on yep. play. Kind of at the halfway mark, what's your report card of the team so far? Well, we're getting better, which is a good thing. We played a really tough schedule early. I think we were, saw it the other day, top 30 in the country, strength of schedule early. So I didn't you know, necessarily <laughs> know that going into it, that it would look that way. So obviously we were really tested early. And I think we figured out a lot about ourselves and obviously playing better baseball uh, recently is what you want uh, when you get into conference play. Yeah, that tough strength of schedule to start the year off. Now going into ASUN, how does that prepare the team going into conference play, or I guess for the remainder of conference play? Well, I think if you're doing it the right way, <laughs> you kind of handle failure and grow from it. You know, I mean, I think that's the message we've kind of had to um, have as a team. And, and what we talked about is nobody's stopping anybody from getting better. And when you've been challenged and things have been tough, uh, if you say about it the right way and you stay resilient, then you know better results are usually in front of you. So that's uh, kind of what we're seeing and what we hope continues. And to turn the attention kind of the lineup with what you guys have been doing this year, I mean, long balls. It's yeah. a lot of home runs. Second in the A-Sun in home runs, yeah. I believe. Ten guys with two or more, 11 have hit a home run this year. Yeah. What's the approach at the plate to, to lend itself to power like well, that? Well, you had James on here earlier in the <laughs> year. That's kind of his forte, you know. I mean, him and I have worked together previously and uh, you know I mean I think we hit 130 or something our last year together so you think about that number but he's just good at teaching guys how to drive the ball and have confidence and some of its freedom in the box to really get your best swing off and so I think that's what you're seeing is guys are are comfortable and they know what they're looking for and uh, it's producing results to drive the baseball out of the yard which is obviously fun. Yeah, one of the guys that's been doing that at a really well, at a really high clip, he's also hitting for average, something you don't necessarily always see, Dylan Lewis. I yep. mean, local kid out of our Drew Kell High School. Yep. Can you kind of talk through his growth this season and what he's meant to the team? Oh, what a dynamic player. Obviously, you know, I think his connection, his family's connection to Queens is a big deal when as a first year head coach, you're looking for people that really care about the program. Uh, more than I could when I got here, right? And that's somebody who grew up around Queens, knows about Queens, and then for him to have the success he's having, right? I mean, scary hitter at the top of the <laughs> order, can steal bases, can drive it out of the yard. I think he went three for four last night, and was on base three or four times. I mean, we had a, a really nice offensive showing yesterday. And so, I mean, he's a staple in what we're doing, obviously, and, and he's a really fun, dynamic player to watch. And coming up for you guys, a, a big time road stretch. I believe you don't have another home game until late April. Yeah. Um, a bunch of road games. Next up, it's Lipscomb and Nashville. But well, what does a road stretch like this at this point in the season do for a team in terms of bringing them together or kind of finding that, that thing that makes the team really tick? That's a good question. Uh, you know, I always think that like team chemistry is organic. And so, you know, winning helps team chemistry. A road trip is, it doesn't make it easier, actually, especially in this stretch. You know, you got finals coming up. There's really a lot of layers to this trip. You know, I told the guys uh, when this week started that this was going to be challenging on sleep and rest and recovery and competitiveness, all the things that you want to do a good job of to give yourself a chance to win. So. Um, I think this stretch is going to be a challenge for us. We're going to get really tested against good opponents on the road, and, and we want to play good. So, so we'll see. To be determined, right? <laughs> and next up is Lipscomb. What have, what have you seen out of them so far this year, and, and kind of what do you guys need to do to get going against, against that team? Well, they returned seven to nine hitters from last year's team that was in a regional. Um, they were really, you know, I called pitches against them last year, so I, I lost sleep over that. Uh, I'm not calling pitches this year, which is, is nice. Me and Coach Bay were going over uh, scouting reports on their hitters, but a really talented group offensively, um, mature, older, um, but they're not, you know, they're not clicking the same way they were last year. So uh, there's some opportunities for us to go down there and, and get them. So, uh, you know, honestly, I'm looking forward to it. We, we sit at the same spot. 
in the standings right yeah. now. So it really is an important weekend to go down there and, and put our best foot forward. Yeah, awesome. And to change gears going away from the team this season, saw you were coaching the Valley Baseball League. I, I spent I some time okay. in the Valley Baseball League, so we yeah. got to talk about it. You're with the Winchester Royals, I was. Charlestown Cannons, now the Percival Cannons. Yeah. Not sure if you. Oh, I know. I actually <laughs> just got a phone call from Ridge, who's the GM for Percival Cannons, just I, right before I got on this show. I love that. I spent time with the uh, Turks down in Harrison. Okay, Great yeah. Great time. But yeah, with the um, yeah, head coach. Yeah, he's Weiss. still at Bob. Bob yeah, I, they beat us in the championship. He's still there, right? He's still of there. Course he's he is. still kicking. I think yeah. he's uh, going to be his 75th year Turkey, in the, yeah. in the, in the <laughs> Valley. At least. <laughs> but yeah. what was your experience for those two two summers in Shenando in the Shenandoah Valley, Virginia? And, and how did you go there to be a coach for those two summers? Gosh, that's okay. That's a longer story than maybe <laughs> I have time for to how I ended up there. But I was trying to get into college coaching and one of my best friends in coaching who's the associate head coach at West Virginia calls me. He's going to be the head coach at Winchester. And he's like, hey, my my pitching guy's gone. Uh, this is 48 hours before report in the okay. summer. Yeah, so and no he's time. like, you think you could do this? And I'm like, I mean, we were on the road the next morning. I wanted to be in college coaching really bad. And we were great that summer. It was awesome. We were a team of mid-major players that flew around, showed up to early work, grinders. We were awesome, lost in the championship. We hit a ton of homers. We were ranked in the top 10 in the country for summer teams. Um, and then Percival stole our whole staff away that next summer. We were- Smart move by them. It, it, I, it was, it was. Um, and so we all bumped up. Steve became the GM of the team. Or he put the team together. The guy that had coached third, a uh, guy by the name of Bobby Rao became the head coach. And then uh, I, that was my first experience coaching third that summer and so yeah I just want to be in college baseball honestly so that's how I ended up there and um, I mean that area of the country is yeah it was, a, it was the first time I'd ever been on the East Coast um, my wife spent a summer uh, the second summer in Charlestown with us in West Virginia so really cool place and and I have unbelievable memories uh, coaching summer ball out there that's all you spent time in that in the north division of the Valley yep. Baseball League the south division is the best. I got a funny story for you. Yeah, I got to tell because the first year we were there, we were the, Winchester was the furthest north team, yeah. and you drove down. I think it was Highway 81, 81 maybe. Yeah. And so we would only drive south for games, and so our owner um, he tinted the windows on one side of the bus because on the way home the sun would be down. So the other side, we only have one side of the bus tinted. Uh, so that it would stop the glare of the sun on our south trip. So <laughs> that that funny. sounds like summer yeah. league baseball. Yeah, you gotta, well, you gotta save money wherever uh, you can and make it the best uh, best yep. experience. But during that time there, you said you wanted to get into college coaching. What did you learn about yourself getting into college coaching? I mean, that is your first taste of it. Yeah. What did you learn what to do, what not to do, I guess, more specifically, and just about yourself during two years in the Shenandoah Valley? It's beautiful. Yeah. There's not a whole lot to do in the Shenandoah Valley. Well, I loved it. It was baseball only. So I think you figure out as a young coach, like, is this really what you want to do? Because that's, it's all day. You know, there's, there's nothing else going on other than preparing for the next game and what the players need. Uh, probably the biggest takeaway from those two summers was our first summer was full of mid-major. Like our starting catcher was a D3 from Huntington, Alabama. He ended up being a big leaguer, hit 18 home runs. It was all mid-major players yeah. and we were awesome. And then the next year, uh, because we had been so good and it was the same staff, we, had, we put together a team of really high profile mm -hmm. players. I wouldn't say we stunk, but we weren't near as good. Yeah. And it really was eye-opening how when a player really cares about the outcome, when they're really pouring into it, when they're really trying to get the best out of themselves and prove something. Because that first year, those mid-major guys were trying to get drafted. And that second year, I think they were just playing summer ball because That's their coach had said, yeah. yeah. And so it was like, you know, once I, recognizing the difference, you know, maybe the high profile, talented player who doesn't have the grit and, and the get after it, that guy may not produce the best team. So, so that was probably my biggest takeaway that summer. Makes a ton of sense. Well, thank you so much for the time, Coach. Good yeah. luck this weekend against Lipscomb. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank of you. Course. We'll be back with more on the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina. More than a good trail mix. But a mountain bike trail, not so much. Oh, hey, my pedal. 
wonder where the other one is. From urgent care to your full recovery, Ortho Carolina is there every step of the way. Good day, though. Good, good day. Here, strength comes from within. Practice makes perfect. And curiosity knows no bounds. Queens graduates will create a better tomorrow. Where we go next, that's up to us. The Eats on East project showcases the Royals pride that spreads through East Boulevard, walking distance from Queens University campus. Royals fans and visitors are encouraged to take a walk to the legendary East Boulevard to culminate the true Queens experience at a variety of restaurants. Home of the coaches show, JJ's Red Hots was the first East on East partner. The movement quickly grew as other partners joined, including Lebowski's, Showmars, Jersey Mike's, Brick's Pizza, Kit Cashy, and Penguin's Drive-In. The Eats on East partners proudly support Queens and its mission to create and connect fans and families. From the bluegrass of Kentucky, the Arkansas River, to the beautiful beaches of Florida. From the bustling streets of Nashville, to the soulful sounds of Muscle Shoals and its vibrant cities. Fueled by growth, the Atlantic Sun operates in the fastest growing region in America and broadcasts in over 16 million homes. We're everywhere you want to be, with access to nine of the nation's top 80 media markets, including an impressive six in the top 50. Our 12 member institutions provide every collegiate experience from public to private to faith-based. All of our member institutions are located in the top 30 states with the most rapid growth. So join us because we're not just a stop along the journey. The Atlantic Sun is the destination. Here, strength comes from within. Practice makes perfect. And curiosity knows no bounds. I believe Queens graduates will create a better tomorrow. Where we go next, that's up to us. Welcome back into the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina on the rooftop of JJ's Red Hots. We're joined now by the men's volleyball head coach, Jeremy Price. Jeremy, how are you doing on this Wednesday? I mean, it's a beautiful <laughs> night and we're on the uh, the roof. First time I've been able to do this, uh, this show up on the roof. So uh, what a great venue. It's beautiful. Great hot dogs, great bratwurst, great everything, great fries. And one thing not great, the sun right in my face. But outside of that, fantastic. But you guys gearing up for a little bit of a late season push, three games left on the regular season schedule. At this point in the season, what, what's the message to the team heading into this final three games? Uh, well, one, in our first year in the MIVA, we have an opportunity to qualify for the postseason tournament. And uh, any combination of uh, we control our own destiny, which when you get to this time of year, that's really all you can ask for. And so any combination, if we win, uh, a match this weekend or uh, Quincy loses a match, we guarantee our spot in the uh, conference tournament. Of course, our reward for that will probably <laughs> be a date with Ball State, who is a top 10 team in the country. I heard they're pretty good. And uh, you know, we've already had an opportunity to go to Muncie uh, earlier this year. Uh, so it'll be a, uh, a tough challenge, but you know, we, this is what we're aspiring to mm -hmm. in the year one to qualify for the conference tournament. And I think you know, if, if things can kind of fall our way and we can get healthy, and I think we're trending in that direction, then uh, we maybe can play our, uh, maybe the lineups, some of the lineups we anticipated back in January and February. Yeah, I mean, it's not often at this point in the season you can say you're getting healthier, but was missing Jack Brinkman for a few games a few weeks ago. You got him back to play on Saturday. W what was his return to the lineup? What did that mean for your team overall? You know, I think, you know, Brink's one of those guys, one, he's a senior, so really I'm happy that he's back for senior weekend yeah. here, which is obviously a big deal. Uh, but, you know, he just plays, 
with such passion and energy and just gives us a little bit of an edge. Yeah. And uh, I think we, we miss that uh, when he was out. And obviously he's a really good player who, you know, leads us in kills. He, you know, the week before he got hurt, he set the program record for kills in a career. Uh, so over 900 with us, uh, 1,000 in his career. And so, you know, those are, those are significant milestones. So obviously a guy that can be uh, pretty terminal with the ball and something you want this time of year. Yeah, you mentioned his passion. When he was on the sideline, he was with you guys as coaches, essentially. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen a coach of course, a, a current player, but with that much passion, I think he got a couple uh, couple warnings from the referees. I think he thought the polo shirt meant he could talk to the officials, and uh, <laughs> I actually told that to the the second referee. I said, you know, he's wearing uh, pants and a polo <laughs> shirt, so he thinks he can coach <laughs> now. But, uh, you know, he's a really smart player, and he's so passionate, and he was full of ideas. I did tell him, I said, I'm really ready to get you back out <laughs> on the court, though. Yeah, I can see how that how that would happen. Uh, but he's a senior, a lot of seniors on this roster for you guys, and it is, like you said, senior weekend. What has the impact of this senior class meant to Queens men's volleyball? Uh, well, it's very impactful. So we've got a senior class that ranges from everybody from Shafar Grant, who's been here for a year, to Daniel Aital, who's been here for five. Yeah. And, you know, they, they run the, the gamut, and then we have a couple traditional, you know, four-year seniors as well. And uh, this class is going to be the one that, you know, their senior year was when we made our MIVA debut. And they have seen a lot of success. Um, they are going to be, I think, the second senior class in a row to finish with more wins than losses in the set now seven-year history of our program, which is what you want to see trending. And so it's a pretty special class. Uh, mm -hmm. In that respect, you know, the, the guys that came in and are the traditional four year seniors, they're the ones that spent their fall semester, their first year of college online. Uh, they played in masks their freshman year in front of no fans or a yeah. handful of fans, depending on the venue and the time. And for them to progress to where we are now and to accomplish the things that they have accomplished and to be the class that led us into the transition to the MIVA is, is huge. I can't say enough about uh, the six members of the class and I'm excited to send them out, I think, in a way that's you know, hopefully worthy of what they have given to this program. Yeah, big time matchup this weekend. You control your own destiny. Lindenwood comes into town, another MIVA matchup. What do you see out of Lindenwood, and what do you guys need to do to come away with one win, two wins, sweep that series? Yeah, uh, you, you know, unfortunately, we're hitting Lindenwood. They're playing really, really well right now. Uh, they beat Ohio State uh, the last time out, and uh, they had a, had a really good weekend. Uh, I think they beat Fort Wayne on Friday. At Friday, they beat Fort Wayne, and then uh, Saturday, they beat Ohio State. So they're, they're peaking at a good time. They have a lot of veteran players. Yeah. Uh, A.J. Lewis is a six-year senior, I think. And uh, he's been, he's one of the top players in our conference. And so they've got a lot of really, really dynamic, talented athletes out there. Uh, but I think it's gonna be, be a good matchup. And again, you know, if we can continue to get healthy, yeah. then I think it's gonna be a real battle back and forth. Really what every weekend is like in the MIVA. Um, you know, even last weekend we were at Loyola. And I thought we played a really good match, especially on Saturday and uh, just were a couple points away. And not to get too in the weeds here with the lineup and how you're looking at it going into the weekend, but you have Pilch back, Brinkman back, Chance Champagne, the freshman who stepped up in a big way in Pilch's absence. He's healthy. H how do you plan on using those three guys and Vazoha's in there as well, who's been a great outside for you guys? Is, how do you plan to, to work them all in and get them all chances? Well, I think if this year has proven anything is you need all those guys. <laughs> and uh, you know we're gonna have to, to make use of, of everybody's skill set. Uh, and even with the matchup that we have on Tuesday, our last non-conference before hopefully the conference quarterfinal, you know, I think we're gonna have to play a, a pretty, you know, that's three matches in a six day yeah. span. So we're gonna have to use really everybody that we can in our roster. And so I think all three, all, all four of those guys that you mentioned, you know, we'll, we'll probably start at least one match. And uh, as we're just keep trying to find that lineup, that uh, that's going to work, so we can make some noise in the uh, in the conference tournament. Love it, and 
going all the way off of volleyball. Last time you were on the Queens Coaches Show, presented by Ortho Carolina, we talked mustard, right? I'm so big I, fan. I guess this time we got to talk other toppings on hot dogs because you can go onion, sauerkraut. You said you weren't a big relish guy. Is it only mustard? I, I said I like the onions. Okay, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think you can't go wrong with just the spicy mustard, like I like I said last time. <laughs> I, I, I don't uh, really bringing it back. Yeah, I just can't. I just you know I just can't do the ketchup on the hot dog. That's, that's just not me. I respect it. I I think it's wrong, but I respect it. I'm a big ketchup guy. Ketchup, mustard, uh, relish, onion. Some people may say I'm going a little overboard, but the more the better. I like uh, I like the kielbasas with the spicy mustard. Too. Very fair. Very fair. But. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Always an exhilarating chat about mustards. Yes. We'll look forward to it after the games this weekend against Lindenwood. Yeah, come check us out uh, Thursday night at 6 and Saturday at 2 o'clock. All games on the Queen Sports Network, so you can check it out. If you can't make it into Curry Arena, you can stream it all live. And we'll be back with more Queen's Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina from the rooftop of JJ's Red Hots. Queens men's basketball punched their second straight ticket to the ASUN Championships and history would repeat itself as the Royals rolled past the Eagles in round one, then would conclude their season in the quarterfinals against the reigning ASUN champs. Good job, fellas. The Queens swimming program wrapped up their season at the National Invitational Championships. The men came in second place and the women finished at fourth, jumping up a solid six places from last NICs. Inside Curry Arena, Coach Jeremy Price secured his 200th career win, and grad student standout Jack Breekman earned the all-time program kills leader title after defeating Barton 3-2 earlier this month. At the 49ers Classic, sophomore Jake Nutzel broke the Queens program record in discus throws, not once, but three times in a single day. I don't know about you, but Royals Nation is feeling number 22, Kayleen Favreau. The sophomore reached 100 career points and helped the Royals gain four victories during March. Queens men's lacrosse took care of conference business, taking down Lindenwood. Sophomore Brendan Nay says it's important to keep this perspective. Try and get uh, everything going all at once. We're a very young team, so we, we're, we know we're going to make some mistakes, but it's just all about learning and growing from them. At the tennis court, the men's squad secured six straight team wins over the past month. Freshman Ron Mate is the only Royal to match the winning streak in singles play. Queens baseball started off the month competing under the bright lights at Atrium Health Ballpark. Later, the Royals would set a program record of 22 runs in the series finale at Austin P, earning Coach Hendrick and the Royals their first ASUN victory. Softball earned their first ASUN series win over North Florida, and pitcher Autumn Courtney finished the month as the leader in D1 strikeouts. And you want to know what her secret to success is? Just wait. I'm not a very superstitious person. Just a little stitious? A little bit. I do love hacky sack. Like, I tell the coach all the time, if we don't play hacky sack before the game, it's not going to be good. We're the latest follow at Queens Athletics. Thanks, y'all. Sit by, uh... <laughs> Welcome back into the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina on the rooftop of JJ's Red Hots. We're now joined by Jan. Can you pronounce your last name for me? Delkuskam. Yeah, I'm not getting that one. Uh, Jan, you, you told me what I need to call you beforehand, like what your proper title was. Oh, yeah. What, what is that proper title that you're going by? Well, I prefer to be informal, especially in such relaxed settings and interviews. So um, I consider myself chief entertaining officer here I love at Queens. It. I love I it. I think that's much more <laughs> fancy, actually, than my official title. <laughs> that's awesome. And what does the chief entertaining officer do for Queens Athletics? Well, aside of um, making sure that we somehow stay on track and on schedule overall, <laughs> um, I guess making sure that we all have a good time um, <laughs> and that we do enjoy going to work at 8 and leaving at 5. <laughs> no, just kidding. I wish college athletics would have that nice hours. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it never, never really lines up that yeah. nicely. But you were a college athlete at Queens, then went right into to Queens on, on the other side of it. Why did you choose to, to stay in the Queen City? Oh, good question. Um, 
trying to find a short answer for you. <laughs> I you can think go as long as you want. One of, one of the biggest advantages of Queens and at the same time challenges is once you're there and enjoy yourself mm -hmm. and have a great time, get to know wonderful people that help you not only excel in your sport, in your academics, but especially help you grow as a person. It's a hard and a tough place to leave. And so I guess that's why I decided to stay sixth year. <laughs> it makes sense. And Favorite part of your job on a daily basis? What's the, what's the best part of go, going into work? Favorite part of my job? Hmm. I ask the tough questions. That's all I do here. I was about to say. Um, <laughs> hmm. Should have had an answer prepared. Um, I'm not saying lunch break. No, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Probably checking off things off my checklist. Um, that works. I guess that's a very, very uh, good, good start and uh, a very neutral point. So while you were thinking, yeah. you flashed a, uh, a big old ring. <laughs> Can you kind of walk through the national championship ring you're wearing and, and what, because and, you're a swimmer for, for Queens beforehand. Yes. So what, what was it winning that, that national championship? What was it like? Well, it was a historic one uh, to the extent that it was our last division two national championship. It was, uh, this is the ring of uh, 2022. Uh, which we got uh, back my first senior year, so to speak. <laughs> I've had five years that I was privileged to be not only part of uh, Queen Swimming, but also serve as a team captain. And uh, throughout our five years at Queen's, I think every national championship has been special in its own ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2022 national championship has been special for me in particular, because uh, that was the year that I unfortunately needed to pause uh, for uh, five and a half weeks due to mono um, or in winter. And so being out sick is not um, convenient anyways, especially not in swimming. But I think the biggest challenge was the uncertainty around mm -hmm. it. Because when you, once you get diagnosed, you need to get, and get your blood work on a yeah. weekly basis. And you never know if it's going to be four weeks, it's going to be six months. Yeah. And so actually uh, the day that uh, our conference championship started, uh, they were like, you're good to go and swim and race again. I was like, wow, that's fantastic. I'm, I guess I'm going to start with a warm up and then ride going to my 4 a.m. But I personally didn't care. I was just uh, very happy to then race conference and then also support my team to my best ability at nationals. That's awesome. And on the Queen's Coaches Show, of course, we talked to a lot of coaches and, and what it goes into, you know, creating a winning program and everything like that. But from the student athlete perspective, what, what sacrifices did you have to do and what dedication did it take to win the Division II National Championship? Well, I feel like, yes, you do make time sacrifices. You do dedicate your life, your yeah. lifestyle to your collegiate career, to your team, to your teammates. But overall, I think it's the notion of gratitude that makes it very easy uh, in a lot of places to do that because while you do sacrifice something on a daily basis, there are so many more people that also sacrifice something yeah. for you to be in the position to succeed, to lead and to grow as a person. And so I would like to actually take this moment to shout out uh, my former coaching staff and also uh, with Bob Grosseth uh, and my post-collegiate uh, <laughs> swim, swimming career, uh, Bob Grosseth. Uh, but also thank you, Coach Jeff. Thank you, Coach John. Thank you, Coach Nick for really taking and dedicating your life, allowing us to thrive and go for national championships and for me to have a stellar five-year collegiate career and now returning post-collegiate uh, in our pro team at the pool. So That's awesome. And I completely lost my train of thought where I was going next. I had a great <laughs> next question lined up. I know how that feels. Don't I, worry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm feeling your struggles earlier when you're trying to think about what the favorite part of your job was. I guess from the, that, that figured it out. I just had to talk my way through it. What was your best event? My best event yeah. in swimming? Yeah. I was a breast choker and uh, I am, so I did race the 100, 200 breast, 200, 400 M. I need to admit though, my favorite events were definitely the relays. Okay. Uh, yeah, serving and uh, being there with the three other mates behind the blocks and racing that event together and going for a national championship, it always gets double points in the relays, I think was the most special experience throughout my entire collegiate career. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time on this Wednesday. Hope to talk to you again soon on the Queen's Coaches Show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll be back with more here on the rooftop of JJ's Red Hots. This is the Queen's Coaches Show presented by Ortho, Carolina. Max has been practicing to be a 
a professional soccer player his whole life. do better let me take that from the top from your first real urgent care visit to full recovery ortho carolina is there every step of the way I think I'm okay, I'll see. Ah. it's acl ah. he's getting really good every journey has a starting point Each student has a moment when talent and passion meet opportunity. At the intersection of challenge and support, self-discovery fuels breakthroughs, and leaders emerge prepared for what's next. I grew up loving music. It possesses this very real, very unique power for connection and healing. And my journey as a music therapist took shape here. I discovered the pool offered a more level playing field and the chance to push my limits. At Queens, there's so much opportunity and our potential for greatness accelerates with every step of our collective journey. I've always had a knack for chemistry and that talent has magnified since I got here, rippling out in new directions. I'm not afraid to take risks. I believe challenges make us stronger and innovation only comes when we're willing to lean into the unknown. I'm still not sure what the future holds, but whatever it is, Queens has prepared me for it. My professors push me in the classroom and believe in my abilities. Coaches, professors, all of us, we're one team, one family. Here, my voice is heard. I'm given the freedom to be myself and charter new opportunities for change. Here, strength comes from within. Practice makes perfect. And curiosity knows no bounds. I believe Queens graduates will create a better tomorrow. Where we go next, that's up to us. Welcome into the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina. We're joined now by the women's lacrosse head coach, Kelly McQuilkin. Kelly, how's your Wednesday? It's been pretty good. We're deep into the scout for liberty so it's been a good day can't complain that's going to be a i mean we can dive right into that matchup because sure. two teams atop the a sun two of the the better teams in the a sun and yeah. an early conference clash for you guys mm -hmm. what do you expect to see out of liberty yeah i mean they fight so i'm <laughs> expecting a, a blood bath on saturday we'll be on the road liberty is a hard place to play um, but kudos to them, they've done a really good job with their program and yeah, we got to come to play and we've learned so much in the last two times playing them last year, so I think we're ready. That's awesome and you guys, non-conference is essentially all but finished and now you're going right into the A-Sun mm -hmm. schedule. What did you yeah. learn from the team during the non-conference time and, yeah. and what can you take and take that into conference play? Yeah, you know, we're constantly learning. I mean, we're even learning from our kind of solid game on, on Saturday of um, you know, at this point in the game, what do we need? What do we need the day before a game? What do we need three days out from a game? So we have an interesting mix of a lot of experience and then also some young guns on the field too. So blending all those, but we're learning a lot. I think learning when to push the buttons on some of these girls and say run faster and, and maybe when to taper back and, um, you know, give them a little bit of rest on their legs too. And one of those players that I think has figured it out pretty well so far to start the season, mm -hmm. Kayleen Favreau. Yep. She's been <laughs> balling out. I think 40 goals this year, two-time player of the week in the A-Sun. Mm -hmm. what, what has her play done for your team this year? She just plays with such poise and confidence. I, th I think she is like silent but deadly. <laughs> you don't hear from her a lot, but when she speaks, you know you need to listen because it's something really awesome that you're going to hear. Um, but the one thing I just love about Kay is that she could have 10 points in a game, but if we lose, it's not good enough for her. So she really just 
Um, she flies under the radar, I think, a little bit, but at the same time, like, she can put some goals in the back of the net, and it's just a, a rock star for us on offense. Yeah, and she's just a sophomore, 87 yeah. career goals. What was the recruiting process like for her? Because that, that seems like a top-end, like, high-level yeah. talent that you were going up against some other big-time schools to get. Yeah, so that's a funny question. So that was actually before my time. <laughs> so she was committed to Queens before I got the job. So she was a 2022 commit, um, and that class committed pretty much virtually through the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was committed to the last coach and then to the Division II program. So it's been really cool to see um, that sophomore class in particular. I mean, the announcement came in June and they came to school in August. So they had a quick decision to make to stay and I'm just so glad that they did. So I guess kind of a follow up to that is when you take over the new job, you do have these recruiting classes that are in place. What's the process of taking over a program, figuring out everything from the coaching side, everything from the yeah. logistics side, mm -hmm. then to pick up the phone and, and call your players that, hey, we, we'd still yeah. love to have you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, um, so thankful to Coach Claire. I mean, she likes speed. I love speed, so we agree <laughs> on that. And then she just recruited some really good people. So I would say speed, athleticism are the top, but also you just you need to come from a good family. You need to have a good head on your shoulders. And, and she did that, so it was a pretty easy phone call for me. That's awesome, and we're here on the rooftop at JJ's Red Hot, so I'm gonna throw a couple weird questions at you, see if Bring we can on. do them on the fly. Okay. So, JJ's, they've got fantastic hot dogs right downstairs, great plug okay. there, okay. but I'm gonna name them, what they have, and see if okay. you can then kind of put that towards a player on your roster. Okay. So first up, we have the JJ's number one Red Hot, you know, just classic relish, onions, mustard, dill pickle. So just a classic mm. go-to day in, day out type of hot dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's that on your team? Who's that on your roster? You had me at dill pickle. I just feel like <laughs> Elise Grissett. I don't know, just something about it, number 20. Just something about mm -hmm. the dill pickle. That just something about the dill pickle. <laughs> spoke to you on that one. Mm -hmm. So the char heel, Carolina style, house made okay. chili, diced onion, yellow mustard, you know, a little interesting, but still a, a go-to everyday type of, type of hot dog. Yeah. I'm going to go with the local, Colby Dugdale. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a local pro and the chart. Just, char the, just the, the chart heel. I have to go with the local. Makes total mm -hmm. sense. Chili cheese, mm -hmm. as you can imagine, chili and cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a tough one. I feel like maybe Mara O'Donoghue. Okay. Just Why? I don't know. <laughs> that was going to be my follow-up, so yeah. <laughs> glad you nailed that one. Great. Perfect with that. <laughs> Um, the Jolette Jake, Chicago style, mm -hmm. tomatoes, sport peppers. Mm -hmm. I'm not from Chicago. I don't know okay. what a sport pepper is. Okay. Um, diced onion, pickle relish, deli mustard, mm -hmm. celery salt. Okay. Pickles coming back into this one, a pickle okay. spear. Okay, I gotta go with Bella. She's our Chicago gal, so Man, Bella. You, you got these checked off with where they are. They're, <laughs> uh, quarter hounder, queso, bacon, lettuce, mm -hmm. tomato. The secret sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go with Kaylee Maya Geist. Okay. Hounder. We tell her to hound the ball. And okay. Get the ball back. So I'm gonna go with her. Does she do a good? How does she hound the ball? Is is that the key to the, the defensive side of the ball? She's one of the keys. We need all okay. of them to hound, but <laughs> she comes to mind first. <laughs> uh, Southern Grill pimento cheese, mm -hmm. JJ slaw, bacon, hot blonde mustard. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. <laughs> The pimento cheese might be the curveball there. pimento cheese. So I will go with another southerner. Let's go with Kayleen. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. You know, <laughs> a classic can just yeah. get you 87 goals in two years and and keep Not on too going. Shabby. Yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff. But looking at Liberty, mm -hmm. you guys have that coming up. Well, outside of a win, of course, mm -hmm. what is a successful trip up to Lynchburg for you guys? Yeah. Um, day trip, road trip, I mean, coming off the bus quickly, um, hitting the ground running. I think a consistent scoring for four quarters. And then also we need to slow their transition. So slowing transition, um, being able to consistently score against their high pressure defense, um, and then clearing the ball. It's gonna be important. They Full court press is what they like to do. So, yep, gotta Fun. get ready to go. <laughs> yeah, that, that's off yeah, the bus. So I think 60 minutes, I mean, we look at our games last year, the second game against them was a lot better for us. So mm -hmm. I think really just now we're looking to close that gap a little more and um, hopefully come home with a win. Awesome, well, appreciate yeah. your time. Good luck with Liberty. Yeah, thank you. Of course. We'll be back with more on the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina on the rooftop of JJ's Red Hots. Oh man, there's nothing I love more than a good trail, 
mixed. But a mountain bike trail, not so much. Oh, hey, my pedal. Wonder where the other one is. From urgent care to your full recovery, Ortho Carolina is there every step of the way. Good day, though. Good, good day. Before a city turns to you for answers, before the stories that need telling are told, and our nation's biggest companies look to you to make their next big move. Whenever, however, you're called upon to step up, Queens will prepare you to do just that. Because here, Royals Rise. Welcome to the Atlantic Sun, where heart-pounding moments are born and where champions rise above, where speed defies limits and precision finds its mark, where millions of fans nationwide cheer for excellence, determination, and fairness, where public, private, and faith-based schools compete side by side, fostering sportsmanship and unity. Join us, because we're not just a stop along the journey. The Atlantic Sun is the destination. The Eats on East project showcases the Royals pride that spreads through East Boulevard, walking distance from Queens University campus. Royals fans and visitors are encouraged to take a walk to the legendary East Boulevard to culminate the true Queens experience at a variety of restaurants. Home of the coaches show, JJ's Red Hots was the first East on East partner. The movement quickly grew as other partners joined, including Lebowski's, Showmars, Jersey Mike's, Brick's Pizza, Kit Cashy, and Penguin's Drive-In. The Eats on East partners proudly support Queens and its mission to create and connect fans and families. See all the Royals coaches live and in person during one of their many events held on the fields and courts of Queens University. All tickets for Queens home games can be purchased at queensathletics.com slash tickets. Here, strength comes from within. Practice makes perfect and curiosity knows no bounds. I believe Queens graduates will create a better tomorrow. Where we go next, that's up to us. Welcome back into the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. We'll be back not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday with more. In the meantime, keep updated with all things Queens Athletics over on queensathletics.com. You can also see men's volleyball on Thursday and Saturday on Queens Sports Network. You can find that stream at queensathletics.com. Along with men's lacrosse, they're at home against Jacksonville. Softball, they got a little series against Central Arkansas Saturday and Sunday, ESPN Plus. And baseball, they'll head to Nashville, Tennessee to take on Lipscomb. That's on ESPN Plus on Friday and Sunday. So keep updated with all things happening around Queens Athletics. And we'll be with you next time here on the Queens Coaches Show presented by Ortho Carolina. Max has been practicing to be a professional soccer player his whole life. From your first real urgent care visit to full recovery, Ortho Carolina is there every step of the way. I think